Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to share three of my favorite literacy apps for you to use with K through two students. Now, just last week I made this video right here where I shared three different math apps I love using in a K through two classroom. So this video is kind of the counterpart to that, but with literacy. Now, of course, I know that there are many more than just those three math apps and the three literacy apps I'm going to share today. So at the end of this video, I have a resource for you that you can send home to parents at home that has an entire list of different math and literacy apps that I love using, again, specifically geared towards kindergarten, first and second grade. So I will share a little bit on that at the end of this video. All right, if you are ready to see the three different literacy apps I have for you, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's dive in. Like I said earlier, there are tons of great literacy apps out there that you can use with your students in the classroom, or you can use at home with your own children, or you can send home for additional practice. But I have kind of three different categories of games that I'm going to share. So the first app I'm going to share is a supplementary practice type app. So it is not something that's going to do explicit teaching with your students. It is great for review. So I like to use this app when we are doing literacy centers or if they have extra time on their iPad, and this type of game can be done on an iPad as well as a computer. The game I'm talking about is the one that my husband and I designed together and it is called Letterbug. Now my own two boys who are seven and eight helped develop this app over the last couple years and not only is it highly engaging for students, but it really helps students make that phoneme grapheme connection. In the game, students will guide a little Letterbug to create different words and you can set it up based on skill. Let me show you how to play this. I have used that game so many times with first and second grade students and they absolutely love it. They are always begging to play more. And I like it because not only is it self-correcting, so students will get feedback if it is not correct and they bring the wrong word to the card. Um, and they have to retry it again, which I enjoy, but also with the constant little updates and all the little incentives of getting new colors and new silly hats, uh, students, again, they just love it and it's great practice for them. Now, I mentioned this before, but it is a supplementary type of app. So again, great for a literacy center or some independent review practice, but not something that inherently teaches students how to read. That's gonna be my next app. All right, literacy app number two that I love for K through two students is reading.com. Now I love this app for a few different reasons. This one falls into that category of teaching students how to read using explicit instruction. So it's very scientifically backed, which I love, and it's not necessarily a supplementary app where they're just reviewing things. This actually has a scripted guide for you to teach a 15 to 20 minute lesson to your students. It really packs in a lot of instruction in a little bit of time Time, and it follows the sequential steps you're supposed to take when teaching an effective literacy lesson. Let me show you what this looks like. All right, here's what reading.com looks like when you log in. I have Calvin's profile in here, but I had started this a little bit too late with him. Um, he is now at the end of first grade. This is definitely what a kindergartner would probably be working on. So I will show you what the lessons look like though, and you'll just see for this level. This is lesson 11. We always start with the alphabet song. Here's what it sounds like. What you wanna bet you can learn the alphabet. 
All right, that was a very quick little snippet of the alphabet song, but you can always press skip if your students have done it so many times that they don't want it anymore. Then we go into letter review. And you can see at the top there, it gives parental prompts. So it says, what letter is this? You want students to say I. Then they say the sound slowly while dragging that over with their finger. So they say, eh, eh. And we do it again with T. This is not a continuous sound. So we just say T and M. And these are all letters they've previously learned. They love nice. this part, getting to drag the little thing over. And now we will learn a new letter. In lesson 11, we're learning the letter N. Let's learn about the letter N. Here is a big N, and here is a small N. They make the same sound. N makes the sound. Mm. So it has a little video, and then students will practice saying it themselves, again, dragging that over. And then just another review. Next, we go into a sound story where students will listen to the story, and they're listening for words that start with N. With the sound. Mm. This nice dog named Nitro is not a neat eater. And now we will actually practice making that letter. Um, they can just tap right here and they drag the arrow to create capital N's and lowercase N's. And it does give you little prompts from time to time to remind them to say N makes N. And then they'll practice making it themselves using their finger or a stylus if you have one. Now, halfway through the lesson, we do a little quick check where we just remind students what's the name of the letter and what sound does it make. Very simple. Next, we go to word reading or decoding. And right now, with just the letters that we're learning, we're only in lesson 11. It's going to give us only words that have sounds we've been previously taught. So it gives you little tips here. It tells you what continuous sounds and when to do the stop sound at the end. As the lessons progress, these turn into decodable sentences, again, as students learn more and more sounds. So, sat. Now say it fast. Sat. M, in, min. The words we just went over are going to be used in this little book here. This is called an ant. And it says co-read because we're going to read it together. So the adults would read the words on the top, and then the student would read ant, and then they can go ahead and use their finger to reveal the picture. So again, the teacher or student, or sorry, the teacher or parent reads the word on the top, and then the student reads just the small part, Sam ran, and then they can reveal the picture again. Here they would read Ram ran. And of course, as this gets, you know, as the lessons progress, these will become more and more difficult for your students. I should say they'll be appropriate for your students. And last, there's a little comprehension piece as well where students can just answer some questions about the book that they read. So that is what a typical lesson will look like. After each one, they get little prizes. They can get books and games that will get added that they can go to and use. Um, and again, like I mentioned, as they learn more, the students will be asked to do more and more based on what they've already learned. Then there's a little check-in that you can say how the lesson was for Calvin. If you go into games, here are some games that have been unlocked for students. Here is one called Space Trace, where students can practice making the letters that they've learned. But I really like this app because it follows the same progression each time. And you can see that if you really go through the lessons, it doesn't take long to have an effective lesson with your students. As you can see, it's pretty foolproof and it gives caregivers an exact script to say when teaching students how to go through each of those letters and sounds in each part of the lesson. So this is a really great app to send home to any parents who may want to give their students some extra practice with reading. If you have students in kindergarten or even pre-K heading into kindergarten, this is a great one to kind of do a few times per week to really get your students ready. Also, I love this because you're really giving students that effective practice to help them with that dreaded summer slide that happens over break. Now, I've been lucky enough to partner with reading.com over the last year, and they have given me a special coupon code where you can get 70% off your first three months if you want to try this out with your students. So whether you are a teacher at home and you are sharing this with parents, feel free to share the link down in the description. Or if you are a parent at your own house watching this right now, also go ahead and use that link down below and you can get 70% off your first three months. That will help you out through summer and then you can see if you want to continue that with your students going forward. 
All right, and literacy app number three I love using with K through two students is Epic Reading. Now, the first app, Letterbug, fell into that category of supplementary review practice that's highly engaging. Reading.com fell in the category of explicit teaching. It's great for direct phonics instruction to really help catch up those struggling students. And Epic is going to fall into a third category of just enjoying reading. Now, over the summer, there are so many fun activities for your students to be doing outside, but we don't want to forget that reading with our own kids and having them read books is highly, highly rewarding. On Epic, there are tons of books for your students to browse through and read, and they get little challenges for reading more. It's just highly engaging, and there's so many different books that your students can actually look through. I also love it because there's a bunch of listen to me read options. So even if students can't read all the words on their own yet, they can listen to the book as well. And some of them even have little action moves kind of as the book is reading out loud. Again, it's just highly engaging. Let me show you what it looks like. Here's what it looks like when you sign into Epic. You can see there are four different profiles. So I went into Theo's and right away it's already visually appealing. Here's a new series that I think Theo might like. It's called Camp Epic. Um, this looks like a fun one. And this is a read to me. You can see by the green little read to me at the bottom of the book. Somewhere out there in the multiverse, all of your favorite epic characters are together at Camp Epic. See how many you can spot. So that's what the read to me ones sound like, where students can actually go ahead and listen to the book being read aloud. And then if we go back home, we see different topics for Theo, um, books you think uh, Epic thinks he might enjoy based on books that he's already read previously. Um, up at the top here, I went to the comic section. He likes a lot of comic books. Here's we can find all the read to me's. And there is a video section as well, which I'll go to in a minute. Um, I really try to stick to the read to me because they're, you know, video like, but you're still reading a book, but there are some videos on here that are highly entertaining. It's kind of an all inclusive app down at the bottom. There's a little section where it says my buddy. Um, and here's how you can get an egg by reading 20 minutes each day. And they again, recommend books for you. As you can see, Epic's library is huge and there are tons of engaging books in there for your students to access. Now, I do want to give a fourth little one here. I'm gonna talk about price points on all three of these in a moment, but I also want to share that since none of these apps are free, I do wanna share a fourth one that kind of fits into this third category of just reading for fun, and that is the app Libby. Now, if your child or students have a library card, Libby is a free app that you hook up to your library card for your students to access books through their local library. So it is a great one for your students to download books onto their app. Um, they can read it straight from the Libby app, but if they also have any sort of Kindle device, a Kindle Fire or something like that, they can also download the book on Libby, again, free through their library card, and then they can send it over to Kindle where they can access it there if they want to. It's also great for adults because again, you can do the same thing. All right, real quick, let's talk about price points for each of these apps, just so you know what to expect up front. Here we have Letterbug. This is the app my husband and I designed, and it is the fun, engaging review game. Uh, this one is $8.99. It's that price because we made it for classrooms. So it was meant to be purchased once and then teachers can use it with their class year after year. If you are a teacher and you already own this app, feel free to send it home to your parents over the summer and let, you know, let your kids have fun over the summer. Remind them that they can use this fun app. That app is also available in the SJT Literacy Club. So if you are a member, be sure to download it from there because it's already included in your membership price. Now, if you are a parent and you want to use this with one or two children at home, please feel free to reach out and email me, susanjonesteaching at gmail.com. And I have a special access price for you since you're only using it with one or two students. Just send me an email. Reading.com is listed at $6.99 per month, but like I said, I do have 70% off your first three months if you sign up using my link, and that is down in the description below. The last one here, Epic, is pretty expensive. It is $11.99 per month. I believe during 2020 and 2021, they offered it completely free for students, so maybe they're trying to recoup some of those costs, but if that is within your budget, it is well worth it. And again, if your students are gonna be spending lots of time on the iPad over the summer, along with their tons of outdoor activities, but if they do happen to have a lot of screen time, using any of these apps are going to be a great alternative to some of the other stuff they could be doing, or at least we could just sprinkle it in there from time to time. And like I said, if that's in your price point, it is highly engaging with tons and tons of books for your students to access. And remember, if that's not in your price point, check out Libby, it's completely free. 
All right, so there are three of my favorite literacy apps to use with K through two students. And like I mentioned, I know there are way more literacy apps out there, but I kind of wanted to give you one in each little category. And I think these are great ones to send home over summer. They're great for giving your students caretakers ideas for using technology in maybe some more meaningful ways. Now, two last things for you. Number one is if you have any other literacy apps that you love using with your kids, please share them down in the comments. I love to get a nice big list going for other teachers and parents watching this video. Go ahead and look at those comments and we can see what other apps there are out there. Now, I did mention this at the beginning of the video, but I also created this little send home sheet that you can send home with your students for the summertime. And here you can see I listed a bunch of different apps, both in the math category and in the literacy category for you to let your students know about over the summer. They can check it out, they can play around, they can see what price points really work for them, and they can decide what's going to work best for their kids. That free download is also linked in the description down below. All right, I hope you enjoyed these last two videos where I shared math apps and literacy apps that I think are great for the summertime for K through two students. If you liked this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.